All right, let's look at the next example. Uh, what if we have an 80 liter vessel that contains four kilograms of refrigerant 134A uh, at a specific pressure uh, at a uh, pressure of 160 kPa. Determine the temperature, quality, enthalpy, volume occupied by the vapor phase. That's a lot. That's some interesting stuff. Good stuff. All right. So uh, because I see liters, kilograms, and kPa, I know I'm in SI units, right? I know I'm in SI units, so I'm in Appendix One. Uh, this is refrigerant, so I'm in 11, 12, or 13. Uh, now. Did it tell me it was saturated liquid? No. Did it tell me it was saturated vapor? No. Did it tell me it was a saturated liquid vapor mixture? For, forget about C, you know, all this. It did not tell me. If you don't know, and we'll talk about this la later on as well, but if you don't know if it is saturated or not, assume it is saturated. Go to the saturated tables, all right? Go to the saturated tables, and then if it's not in between the vapor, and the liquid and vapor, you know, it's if it's not on the saturated table, if it's not in between the low of the liquid and the high of the vapor, then, then yeah, it, it will be something else. Uh, but if it is in between them, then, then it is saturated. Um, all right, so which, so SI units, so I know I'm in appendix two, refrigerant, so I know I'm at 11, sorry, SI is Appendix 1. Uh, refrigerant would be 11, 12, or 13. And it didn't tell me, so I'm going to assume it's saturated. And let's go to a pressure of 160. So this is table, not A11, but table A12. Table A12. Let's go to it. Property table. And please, please, please make sure you are read carefully the top to, to make sure you're at the right table. All right, so I'm at table A12. I'm at a pressure of 160 kPa. So there we go right here. So uh, if they give me a specific volume in between those two, then I am a mixture. If they give me a uh, internal energy between those two, then I'm a mixture. If they give me uh, uh, enthalpy between the two, it, you know, do you see how if if I get a value in between the liquid and the vapor, then yeah, I'm at the right place. I am a mixture. We'll talk about what happens if for some reason, if you know it's at 160 and you have an internal energy of 250, then it's not saturated. You're at the wrong table. It's probably superheated. Okay, so uh, did it tell me the enthalpy, did it tell me the entropy, did it tell me the specific volume, did it tell me anything? What did it tell me? Oh, didn't tell me much. It told me the total volume, right? It told me the total volume, and it told me the mass. Do you see how that's just a sneaky roundabout way of telling me the specific volume? If you if you if it tells me the volume and the mass, it really just told me the specific volume. All right, all right. Uh, Eighty liters. Uh, we could convert to meters cubed. All right. Let, let's see here. Uh, specific volume is total volume divided by mass. So this is 80 liters, uh, but it, if we look at the units for a uh, specific volume, it's meters cubed. So I need meters cubed. I need to get rid of liters and get meters cubed. Uh, if this isn't on your unit conversion sheet or in your head, go ahead and memorize that. A thousand, uh, I've got that completely wrong, completely wrong. Uh, imagine a meter cubed. Think about how large a meter cubed is. I, I'm sorry, I... Got that completely backwards. A one meter cubed is a thousand liters. Think about a two liter thing and compare it to a, you know, a cube, a box that is one meter by one meter by one meter. A one meter by one meter by one meter box would hold a thousand liters. All right, so there's our unit conversion. Um, it's really 0 0.08 um, meters cubed divided by four kilograms this would be 0 0.02 meters cubed per kilogram don't you wish you just told, told had told you hey i've got a refrigerant that's at a specific volume of 0 0.02 meters cubed per kilogram 
I wish it had just told us that, but it's not, not, not that it's sneaky, but isn't it a little bit easier to calc to measure four kilograms and to measure the volume than to, you know, tell us a specific volume. All right. Anyway. All right. <laughs> I've got something at a pressure of 160 and a specific volume of 0.02. Is it a saturated liquid? Is it a saturated vapor? Is it in between the two? All right. Yes, it is in between those two values, right? It is uh, 0.02, which is larger than the VF, smaller than the VG. So what does that mean? That means it's a mixture. It's a saturated liquid vapor mixture. It is a mixture. All right. So that is its temperature. Whether it was the liquid or the vapor or somewhere in between the two, it is staying. Remember, kind of boiling water. It stays at 100 degrees. This is kind of boiling. Uh, and it's staying at negative 15.6 degrees C. That was answer to question A. Okay, so let, let me kind of reiterate. I'm at table A12. I'm at table A12. I know that my pressure is 160 kPa. I know that my specific volume is 0.02 meters cubed per kilogram. Uh, do you remember a long, not a long time ago, but the first week, we talked about if you had two properties, you could get everything else. That's essentially what we have right here. We have two pieces of information. We're just going to use those pieces of information to get everything else. With those two, I know it's saturated mixture, and so I know, right, therefore, uh, my temperature is T sat is negative 15.60 degrees C. That is part A. All right, part B, the quality, the quality. Uh, the total mass is four kilograms. How much of that is vapor? I don't know. But what I do know is once you know one V or one property and you know VF and you know VG from the property tables, you can find the quality um, we had an equation for quality, but I'm just going to still go back to V equals VF plus XVFG because if I know the V that it's at and I know the VF at that pressure and I know the VFG at that pressure, I know everything except for X, and so I can solve for that. That's how I'm going to do these. So I'm going to say I know it's at 0.02. I know the VF from, if we went back to that property tables, it would be 0.0007435 plus X times VFG. Now, the property table didn't give this to us, and some teachers would just have to use VG, uh, but I want you, I kind of want you to do VG minus VFG. Many times you can neglect these two, but um, at some temperatures and some pressures, they actually, it would make a difference. So I, I want you to... Uh, do VF minus VG. All right, so anyway, if I know this, know this, know this, I can just solve for X, right? Subtract this over, divide this over, solve for X. Let's make sure it makes sense. 0.157. X does not have units. If, if we went back and looked, you know, X is just a ratio. Uh, X is unitless. So don't, um, don't give me any units right there. That is... Uh, the quality right there, part B. Part C, the enthalpy. All right, it didn't tell me the enthalpy. Um, it tell, it told me the specific volume. Um, if I didn't, if I wasn't asked to find the quality in part B, I would still have needed to find it because I'm going to calculate the enthalpy. How should we calculate the enthalpy? H equals HF plus X H, F, G. So many, many times, if it's a mixture, even if it doesn't explicitly ask for the quality, go ahead and calculate it. You're probably going to need, you, you, you could probably use that quality. So um, I had already calculated the quality by looking at the specific volumes to get X is 0.157. Now I can pretty easily uh, go back to that property table. Let's see, what is H, F, and H, F, G? Let's go back to the property tables um, at 160. Uh, HF, 
two one and H F G two oh nine point nine oh and actually um, my my numbers are a tiny bit different. Some property tables are a tiny bit different from others. Um, even, even that point oh oh seven four. I put three five. This one says three seven. Uh, so we might have slightly different numbers, but we should be very 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 close. All right. So here I'm going to use H F and H F G. Be be sure that you're looking at the right columns enthalpy and you know we're looking at these two i don't need hg in my equation i'm just using h fg so let's go back to our notes hf 31 point i'm gonna use one eight following the um numbers that i'm i'm looking at um x is 0.157 and hfg 209.96 i would get an h 64.1, you can go back and look at what units should we look at. Um, kilojoules per kilogram. Kilojoules per kilogram. Now, um, I don't do this. I think I'm, I'm actually going to do this with my calculator. I'm not going to box that in because it didn't ask for specific enthalpy. It just said enthalpy. And in general, when I just say that, I'm talking about total enthalpy. You know, if I just say volume, I'm talking about total volume. If I just say enthalpy, I really want total enthalpy. This is lowercase h specific enthalpy. Uh, total would be mh, right? We would take that 64.1 kilojoules per kilogram, multiply it times the total mass for kilograms. Yeah, and then we go, so just 64.1 times 4. 256.4 kilojoules is capital H. All right. All right, that was C. And then D. This is going to be tough. This is going to be tough. But I want the volume occupied by the vapor phase. Volume occupied by the vapor phase. All right. So let's see here. I know the total volume, right? The total volume is 0.08, and the total mass right there is 4. Um, do you think we could use this quality to kind of figure something out? I think we use the quality to kind of figure something out. Let me, uh, let me just rewrite my equation for quality. Quality is mass vapor over mass total. And I know the quality and I know the total mass. Let's start there, right? Let's start there. 0.157 equals mass vapor over 4 kilograms. So mass vapor uh, would be 0.628 kilograms. Uh, mass, mass liquid would be the rest of it, right? If it was four kilograms, 3.372 uh, kilograms. Okay, so that's maybe one step that can help help get me there. Um, let's see. I know, I want to know the volume of the vapor, right? That's what it's asking for, the volume of the vapor. I know the mass of the vapor, 0.628 kilograms. I feel like we're doing this all the time. How can we kind of figure out the mass, volume? What about specific volume? If I knew the specific volume just of the vapor, right? This is the mass of the vapor. I want the volume of the vapor. Well, if I knew the specific volume of the vapor, then I could um, answer the question. This is VG, right? This is VG, 0.12355. The property table might give it a little bit different than that right there. All right, so here, big V equals M times little v. Big V would be the mass of the vapor, 0.628, times of the specific volume of the vapor, 0.12355. Let's see if the units work out. Yes, the volume would be 0.0776 meters cubed 
or the volume is 77.6 liters. 77.6 liters. Liters is the volume that the vapor takes up. All right, let's take a step back and kind of look at what we did. Uh, we were given a pressure and we weren't really told it was saturated or not, but they roundabout way gave us the specific volume. We took that to the saturated table and we found that it did lie in between VF and VG. So that did tell us it was a mixture. Because it was a mixture, I knew the temperature was at the saturation temperature. Because it was a mixture, I knew I could find the quality. Once I found the quality, then I could find any other property. I could find H, U, S, you know, any other property that it asked for. So I did that. And then here, uh, it was a little bit tough, but I could, I knew the quality. I knew the quality so I could find the mass of the vapor. And if you know the mass of the vapor and the specific volume of the vapor, then you can find the total volume of the vapor. Now let's look at this. Uh, the volume of the gas the vapor takes up is 77 liters out of the 80 liters, right? 77 liters, 77.6 out of 80. The vapor is taking up 97% of the volume but it's not at a quality of 97%. It's at a quality of only 15%. All right, quality is mass. Quality is the, the ratio of the mass, not the ratio of the volumes. You see here, if you did a ratio of the volumes, you'd get a quality of 97%, and it is not. All right, so uh, quality is a ratio of the mass. Uh, gases just take up a lot more space than liquids, right? Gases, at the same pressure, take saturated gases, saturated vapors, right, take up a lot more volume than saturated liquids. Um, so it, the quality is the ratio of the mass, mass vapor over mass total, not volume vapor over volume total, um, because gases take up a lot more volume. And you, you could see from the specific volume, the values of specific volume, that is the V of the liquid, that is the V of the gas. See how much larger the V of the gas is than the V of the liquid? Uh, yeah, I mean, just look, gases take up more volume than, um, than liquids, all right? Uh, so, but anyway, do you see that we're gonna use over and over and over this right here, little V equals big V over M. Little v equals big V over M. Specific volume equals total volume divided by mass. Know that. So then, then we can rearrange. You know, you only have to write this down once, and then you know big V equals little v times little m. You know that m is big V over little v. You know, no, no need to know, just know one of these, and then you can rearrange to get the other one. Quality is mass vapor over mass total.